Most people stop wanting to tell people their age right around the age of 40. But here's an observation. People who work out and are fit, they love to brag about their age once they turn 40. All right, what's the fit tip? Start working out. You want to be proud of your age? Start lifting weights. One of the best ways to do that. That is an interesting point. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it is. You ever it, notice? No, yeah. very much so. It's if bragging you, rights. If you're in really good shape, you're so quick to tell people like, yeah, I'm 65. Yeah, you, know you love it. Right. You love it. But if you're not, in, like, if, if you ask someone their age, they're like, how dare you ask my age? It's, it's like, never mind. They don't want to tell I you. I just always notice this, yeah. you know, working in gyms, like really fit older people. It's like they try to get a opportunity to tell you how old they are. Yeah, they yeah. want you to know. Like, that's so true. I'm 48 or that's I'm 52. That's so funny. I haven't really thought about that, but that's so true. It's it's the it, and the reason why it stood out. Obviously, I had a birthday this weekend, so yeah. I was thinking about this, and and uh, it's it, it just the the thought or the memories of all these these times just stood out to me. Not because you know people want to say their age, because it's so opposite of the average person. Like the average person, they don't want to. Not only do they not want to bring up their age, they're they're in fact quite embarrassed or shy or whatever, especially, you know, women tend to be more than men, but even men, they don't want to talk about it. But then you get like fitness fanatics and trainers and people who work all the time. And it's like, they try to find a reason to tell you how old they are, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, can you believe I'm whatever? And it's like, oh man, but you know, it's, it's so true. And it's really because you, God, the, the, again, and I was at the gym working out this weekend and, um, I was talking to this gentleman who was in his sixties and he was just so happy to tell me his age. And I was looking at this guy, and he's not like this crazy rip, whatever, but he, he's been working out for years on his own, so he's very fit. And you look at this guy move and work out, and then I think about the average, I forgot how old he was, 64 or something like that. The average 64-year-old, he's like a different species. It's yeah. not even close. You not know what I mean? Day. Like, he's just moving, he's exercising, he's got all kind of great mobility. He was squatting and doing leg curls, and he's just standing with tall posture, all his energy and vitality make you feel it. And then I think of the other 60 year olds in my family that I know or, or neighbors and it's not even, it's not even close. Yeah. And it's thing. probably the, like, he probably gets a lot of people commenting on that as well. You know, it gets reinforced cause it's like you, it's rare to see people that like able-bodied and active and, you know, not complaining about whatever is going wrong with their body. So it's almost like you feel compelled to sort of like share the gospel a bit, you know, of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's a, it's a, it's a big one. And those were always my favorite members too. As, as a gym manager, I loved people like over the age of 40 that were consistent. Um, they always had a lot of wisdom around exercise. They were always the most consistent and they were not fanatical the way that my 20 or 30 year old members were, where sometimes they were still motivated by insecurities. Once you get past a certain age, they have this kind of calm consistency that they would show up with and they'd work out. And I would just love to see it. I'll, I'll, the first time that I encountered that, I was 18. I had just become a trainer. I was working the front desk trying to set up uh, goal assessments, which is a common way to, to introduce yourself to new members. They come in, you scan them, and you see if they want to train with you. So I was doing that. And this guy walks in and I'd seen him already three or four different times. And he was kind of tall, maybe 6'1". He had this really good posture. I remember he had silver hair, right? He would always wear a tank top. And I scanned his card, and I used to catch people. Do you guys remember catching people who would use other people's memberships cards <laughs> yeah. at the front desk? So, And it was, a great, it was a great way to like take the membership away and be like, do you want to buy one or whatever? So I scanned it, and I thought he was using someone else's card because it was 74 years old on the birthday. And I, and I looked at this guy. He's like 50. I thought he was like 50-something. Excuse me, sir. And he turns around and said, uh, when's your birthday? Quick, you know, quiz, right? And he gives me the whole day. And I said, what? I said, you're 74 years old? He goes, yeah. I said, let me see your driver's license. He showed me. And we became friends. And I'm like, dude, what is, like, what's the deal? Like, what's your secret? He's, I've been lifting mm -hmm. weights, he goes, since I was in my 20s. He's, I'll never stop. I feel amazed. And I, I was so shocked as an 18-year-old kid to see the 74-year-old man that I thought was like, 50 something years old. That was like the beginning of my infatuation. This is why I think there's a lot of parallels in lifting weights, strength training, as there is in investing. It really is like, I mean, compounding. Yeah, it's very compounding. And you, and just like investing, starting off, you know, saving 500 bucks, you know, a month way back when you're like, well, I'm not going to get rich this way. But over time, you start stringing some decades together of consistently doing that before you know it you have millions of dollars that you've actually saved and put away because of compounding mm -hmm. interest right i think the same thing is when you get in first get into working out you think like oh my god like 
I can't see any change or it's, a, oh, my, I've been working so hard in this last six months and all I've moved the needle is this and or I'm only this strong. But it's like, man, you string together some decades of consistently doing that. And the beauty, just like investing, the the less of it you have to do as you get older. Like you once yeah. you've built a really good nest egg and and you were smart with the way you, you invested your money, the, the effort going forward, it gets easier with time. And I don't think that's expressed enough about weight training. And for me, getting into my 40s now and looking back at like my journey of lifting weights, that's the thing that I, which is probably why I bring it up so much, why I'm, what I'm most surprised about that I didn't feel like a lot of people communicate to me is just like, hey, you're going to get to a point where you've been doing this for so long that actually you've got to do very little to just maintain it and yeah. keep it and keep it going because you've invested for so long in hours and days and weeks and months and years of lifting weights. Now you just got to get in there and touch some weights here and there and believe it or not, make some good food choices and you'd be surprised how much you will actually stay that way. And I really, this last, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how I went to... Um, up to the Truckee house with my my Hampton group. I don't know if I told you guys. Yeah, did you I tell did. you guys that I'm the oldest? Yeah. Oh, you told oh, me. The the oldest one? So I didn't know I was the oldest. Yeah. I just, I just assumed, without insulting anybody that I was with, like I just assumed there was a handful of them that I thought were-, were Well, their old. success level makes you think that they're especially older too. Yeah. Like mature, and, yeah. and you know, and right now I don't feel, uh, I, w I would say uh, I would be, if I was like grading myself on my fitness right now, I would be in the lower, like if one to 10, I would give myself like a two or three as far as like my level of fitness and consistency training and diet stuff. And so, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel like super great about mm. it right now, but then I'm in a situation like that with a bunch of other smart, successful people. And I thought that they were older than me, but they were all younger than I was. And I thought, oh man, that's great. And then all of them like, oh, they're making comments about how buff and strong. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, wow, that's, that's weird because in my head, like yeah. that's distorted because of what, how I perceive myself and how I've been training. But it's like, when you get around your peers yeah. and, and use, and the ones that haven't been training, like you've been doing for decades, you really see that gap, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, it makes you wonder a lot uh, in terms of how much aging affects the body versus the, the things that we attribute to aging that are really just a result of our lifestyle yeah. and activity. You know, if you, it's crazy, right? If you look at the data on um, longevity, if you make it to the, what's the current life expectancy? 77 or something like that? 75. 75. That's what it is. So if you make it to 75 without heart disease, diabetes, like all the major ones, the odds that you'll make it another 15 years are extremely high. Yeah. So it's like if you're fit and healthy, um, and you and you make it to seventy five, like you're gonna make another 15, 20 years almost a hundred percent. It's almost positive. It's funny you mentioned because I was actually having this conversation with Everett and uh we were kind of plotting out because he's getting really cocky about getting strong right now. Like uh -huh. he's got they got six pack and they're like, you know, feeling themselves right now. I'm like, <laughs> you know, really like he's he's wrapping out pull-ups and stuff, and he's like speculating. He's like, Dad, I think he's like, I'm trying to think when I'm gonna take you out. <laughs> he's like already planning, he thinks it's 70. He thinks when I turn 70, he's gonna overpower me uh -oh. and like be strong. And so I'm like you know that that gave me extra bit of like gasoline to to keep up and like make sure like I'm still fit and like. Well, that's good that that's good that he still thinks you got thirty more years before he can. Yeah, catch why you. would he wait that long? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't, that was just what he, he's like. I think you're gonna be a strong old man, but I'm I'm gonna be able to take you out. I think when you're. Sick. You know what? That's kind of a compliment. It like, is he a compliment. You're so yeah. so strong. Yeah, bro. that you're gonna be because I think. Yeah, it, I took that. I was like, okay, he'll be at his peak in in about ten ten yeah, years. Not that long, yeah. dude. In ten oh, ten years God. will actually be his when best shot. I'm I'm screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he's gonna have his best shot at you is around you know 10, 15 years from now for yeah, sure. sure. So, yeah, so the fact that he's given you thirty, damn near, you know, saying that's a lot I of guess. respect. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. for sure. That's so awesome. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how this plays out, bro. I'm like, dude, I, you know I'm gonna be training still. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna stop. No, it's like I find myself even now. People ask me my age, and I I almost am like, oh yeah, let me tell you how old I just turned or whatever. You know, you get those comments and stuff. It's kind of yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool, but. Uh, it, it it does make me think like how much of our lifestyle, how much of the that we the the aches and pains and ills and problems that we associate with aging have nothing to do with aging yeah. at all. Now, That's I'm not why, saying that you don't yeah. get older and change. That of course happens, but when you look at the difference between a fit and healthy person who's 
you know, what someone might consider old versus their counterpart who's not fit and healthy. The difference is so vast that you'd realize aging doesn't play it's, it's, the role that we think there's it does. way more of a, a, a correlation than a causation connected yeah. to it. Yeah. And that's why I, we've really done society a disservice by doing all these studies and attaching it to age. Yeah. It's such bullshit. It really is. Because yes, there's some correlation there, but it has more to do with the habits that they've had for so many years and that the average person doesn't do this, doesn't do that, makes these choices. And th therefore, you know, we can say, oh, when people get this age, these things happen. It's like, ah, man, that's so not true because for every, for every study that shows that I can give you an example of a client that I know that I train that was the opposite of that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so it really gives people this perception of like, Oh, well, you know, who cares anyways? I'm going to get old eventually. Everybody gets old. And what do you, I mean, I remember when family used to say that to me when I told them that I was doing fitness for a career. Like, well, what do you do to get older? Like, you can't do that when you get older. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. They used There's to no say retirement that. Plan I know. That was like a thing, people. like, oh, yeah. that's cool for your 20s and 30s, but what are you going to do when you get old? Old, You know what I'm saying? You can't be, what are you going to be, a fitness trainer? Dude, I had trainers say that. Like, yes. I'd be the old guy trainer. I'm like, why not? Like, yeah. yeah. There's like, always, what the like, fuck is up with that? That I can't have this as a career. Like, you know, that's the whole point of this career is that, that yeah. I'm, I'm trying to slow down that process or improve getting older. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just think it's, but it's that perception that we have and, and these studies that we do that you know correlate all these things to old age i think we just we're doing people a disservice because i think a lot the average person who doesn't understand a lot about what you're communicating they just go oh well you know i'm gonna get old anyways so i may as well enjoy the, yeah. my youth and not give a fuck and eat whatever and not train and not do those things it's like oh man they're just a total misconception around yeah that. today's youtube giveaway is maps aesthetic here's how you can win Leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on right now. MAPS Performance is half off and our Extreme Fitness Bundle, which is MAPS Hit, MAPS Performance, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide is also half off. Both of those 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I was working out at uh, the UFC gym over here by Oak Ridge Mall uh -huh. in, the, in the morning, and it's a different crowd, right? It's a totally different crowd than the than where I, when I go to the the country club that I typically work at. So the country club place, and by the way, I always work out early. It's like six a.m. It's an older crowd at the country club place, and at the UFC gym, it's a younger crowd. But still, that morning crowd tends to be very serious or whatever. A couple observations: one, uh, this made me sad. The U at the UFC gym because it's a younger crowd. I saw I saw probably three or four like like workout partner groups, you know, dudes working out. All of them had phone stands and were recording like <laughs> and were filming bits of their workout to post Ugh, on social media. So annoying. Yeah, and it made me kind of sad because the the atmosphere of the gym has changed so much in that sense. Like I remember when I first started, I mean, people had headphones and Walkmans, you know, when I first started, but not everybody wore them. Most people listened to the music in the gym, which kind of made you a part of the gym while you worked out. Then mm -hmm. everybody started wearing headphones, so they kind of isolated themselves. Now everybody's got a phone, they're recording, and you're kind of like on your own island type of deal. Mm -hmm. And it made me a little sad to see these kids do that because none of them look like, I mean, like no disrespect, you know, if that's your business, fine. But I don't think this was their business. I think they're just posting their, you know, their workouts. Did, and Did you hear Vicky and I talking about this this morning? No. Oh yeah. So we have a, I didn't even know we had this like mutual friend that we, that we both know. She actually lived with this person for a little bit without rolling this person on the bus. But she, uh, we know, I knew the husband that she, and she knew the wife and they were, uh, fitness professionals. Right. So, and they're in their on Instagram and they have the one, one of them competes and stuff like that, or they both compete. Sorry. And, uh, she told me that they, I was like, Oh, when did you stop hanging out? She's like, honestly, she goes, I just, I was so tired of like everywhere we, we couldn't even have dinner or do things like that. They were on their, they all, were recording everything that oh, they did. Yeah. And I remember, I remember when we, when we were first hanging out with Craig and he was doing the same thing. Like, and I was like, dude, why do you like, it's like, it's crazy how much, how many people get sucked into the, the social media space. And then, 
And then I think the one of the worst things that ever could happen to them is they actually make a little bit of a business out of it. Because mm -hmm. then you could easily justify it. I mean, if you of have course. like you have no following, nobody gives a shit, like and you're trying to do it and, and stuff like that. And then after a while it doesn't take and you're like, oh, yeah. whatever, this isn't for me. Yeah. Or and maybe you don't follow you don't follow through. Yeah. But I think one of the worst things that happens is is get a get a little bit of confirmation. Like, yeah. oh, I grew People my following. Expect me to do this. They yeah. want to see my food. They yes. want to see this. Yes. Yeah. And then it turns into and then maybe you make a little bit of money online, and so now you've like you're justify it to the people around you like oh you know or maybe even worse you think it's cool and you're bragging about it that you have this thing and so I tell you, it's I, become more and more common it's just weird to see these kids do it um and I, I was i felt sad for them because they're not experiencing what i experienced at their age which was you're there which was a guy coming and smashing your phone and being like get that out of here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you know hey, hey we got thrown in the trash listen, dude. let's you, be honest let's play play like, try this if you work out and you have your phone and you tend to look at it in between sets which i can be guilty of as well try a practice where you don't pull out your phone at all and you just are in the workout it actually changes the effectiveness and the feel and the benefits of the workout. listen all this stuff is coming so we've, we've been talking about this for nauseam for i don't know how many years i mean when was when was the adam altler book where you guys tease oh, yeah, me yeah. forever right this is we've been talking about it on this show for fucking five years right that's the first time I heard you pronounce it. Uh, yeah. Altler, Altler, yeah. Alter, Alter. Yeah, I used to say Atler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's alt. It's yeah. the L's first, right? So, anyways, we've been saying it forever. the The pendulum is swinging back, and it's going to become a trend and a thing now to to not do that stuff. I'm, I guarantee you, the generation coming up. You know what I was thinking? Yes, of? but also, have you guys seen the Apple goggles? It's all my notes to talk about. Okay, today. Yeah. bro. Yeah, you see, I had to. Yeah, driving I, and stuff. I now. went. It, Cause have you seen anybody in person? Like, wearing no, I haven't on? seen it in person. I, I just saw videos and was like, okay, well, I know Apple released that. And I'm like, well, you know, what's the response? Like, what are the tech people saying about all that? So I, I actually watched a few of the videos of people kind of like doing their reviews and whatnot. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this is going to take over phones. It's yeah. going to take, it's, because it's people like people are going to walk around with these things. You're just gesturing. Happening. You don't need a phone. People are driving. It's it's not. It's it's. Uh, you're, you're, so it's basically like it's you, augmented. Yeah, you have cameras that are um, recording outside, and then it, it portrays it. And so you, basically, you can see the outside world, the real world, while it's augmented yeah. with virtual reality. People so they're interacting not, and they're doing all these weird things. We're not going to look at each other anymore, guys. Yeah, so well, good, these dude. will allow us to, right? So that's the interesting. No, thing you're gonna look at people like that. No, I know, I know. But I mean, you, but you, we see each other. So if you had them on, I had them on. We see each other. It's I know just, that, but I mean, they're look, so dorky. But like, if enough. But but think about this: how many dorky people are just gonna sit there at dinner and like stare at their phone and not even interact with you already? It, what's what's the difference between that and like wearing dumb goggles? This is weird, man. You know? Yeah, we're we're. Like, you know what it is, dude? Is that people? I mean. We don't fully appreciate just how much, how important human connection is, like real human connection, yeah. that we're substituting it with false human connection and yeah. we're suffering the consequences, but we're so distracted. It's so addicting. But we continue to move in that dude, direction. Dude, this is going to take off again. I, of course I, it is. Because, dude, I'm, it's like you can watch whatever you want. Like it, So if I'm just in a commute, I watch TV. Like people are driving, like doing work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like this yeah. is so bad. Dude, There's is... videos already of people and their, their Teslas while they're, their Tesla yeah. is driving and they're, they're doing it. Because now you – so it'll be interesting to see the laws around this, right? Because uh -huh. you're looking outside. So you still are – it's not like you're not viewing outside. It's just it's, it's augmented reality. Reality. So it just adds to, I mean, is this not the beginning of the plugged in and yeah. unplugged yep. call? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is, this it, is like right? the hybrid of it. Cause this at least is, you're like, you know, you still can walk and like go outside and do things, but it's like, you're basically just fully immersed at the same time. You know what yeah. I was thinking this whole time? And you just, this really even strengthens what I was thinking. So I was just fantasizing, right? I see these, this jam I'm in there. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about, you know, what it was like working out when I was younger and all this stuff. And, I thought, man, if we ever opened a gym, because we've talked about oh, this you make before. It where you can't have phones in the gym. We've already ta we've talked about this. Yeah. That one day yeah. maybe we'll open a gym. We don't care about making money or not. It would just be for us. And I love this idea. I thought, I you know what? It. We would make it to where you're not allowed to bring I, your your if you bring your phone out in the workout floor, you're out. No, you have a place where you check it in when you come in. Check yeah, in. That's, that's it. It's fucking workout. We and have that's like, it. Yeah, I de definitely just work out. I think would have like one camera where it has like your PR station, right? And then so you can get like the footage after you're done, 
But you know, because people are going to want that. Maybe still, or still. not. Like, I, like imagine, imagine right now us walking into a gym. Well, the, the, where you have to check your phone. Yeah. At would, first, you might be a little listen, apprehensive. It's a, but then, the reason it. why it's a brilliant idea is because again, it's there's going to be a, it's going to be like you need that. It's going to be no. It's going to be like left and right. Yeah. Right. It's just going to be like politics. There is going to be a divide. There's going to be people that go the other direction. Right. You see, like the. Bradley Martin's gym were like encouraged, take your shirt off, bring yeah, in video yeah, cameras. Everybody's yeah. like, it's, I hate that. That's encouraged, I right? That. Well, I mean, he's, and he's got a full gym. So there's obviously a, a part of the population that want that direction. Then there's going to be a part of the population that, it, that it values and appreciates exactly your point you're making. And so there'll be, there'll be a, a divide. There'll be this, there'll be enough people that will want that. Yeah. And there'll be enough people that want the other thing. This is where we're going to start to see people go, one way or the other with being plugged in or unplugged. And yeah. I think that these types of things that you're, that, yeah. you're alluding to, I think are going to become more and more popular. I think as, as the research continues to come out, we see what we're doing to children that are getting plugged into these iPads and iPhones so early. And we're starting to see the repercussions of that. I think there'll be a, a portion of the population that wise up like we always do. It's typically yeah. what we do when we, when we progress is we jump head first into it. We realize mm -hmm. that's dangerous and not a good idea. We, yeah. we reassess, we come back and we go, okay, well, how can we still utilize these tools integrated into our, our life, but then not also be consumed by them. You, and so the future looks like, yeah. That. And you know, if you look at fitness trends that explode, uh, cause trends come and go, but there's always an element of like truth in each one of them. Like, okay, that's why that one took off. And that, you know, like curves in the late nineties, early two thousands, it's because there was a lot of women that were intimidated by gyms. They were able to track these these women to work out. Type of CrossFit was the last big massive shift in the fitness space, and it's definitely died off, but it has some lasting impact. And what it did very well is it tapped into that. It tapped into the community. It tapped into community and grit. You, yeah, you're not on your phone or whatever. You're freaking. We're doing this together. You know, yeah. it's like and that people went in there and just became um, like, like, they just loved it. They became zealots because of that feeling. You know, old school gyms didn't even play music. Yeah. You would just hear the, the weights. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I could totally see this happen. I mean, even um, I, I know stand up, they've taken phones and it's been like, they've had amazing yeah. uh, results because of that, because people are just like engaged and they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're you know, present and they're, they're involved in, and I could see like the gym definitely like taking, taking a piece of that because it's like, dude, Every like you said, every every gym now that you go to, it's like somebody bogarting some station uh, just to set themselves up for Dude. it. And at the uh, same time, you have the like I said, the Bradley Martins, and I you're know. seeing more gyms that are accepting people coming in with their their camera crew and no shirts and all that stuff like that. So there's gonna be there's gonna be both. There's opportunity for for both because there's gonna be. Some I don't know if it's a huge market uh, demand for what I'm. It's saying. not yet, no, but I, yeah. I I think. But, for, but but if we did what we wanted, which is literally just yeah, for the audience, we said one day we'll it's open the a gym. counter to it. We don't even care if it makes perfect. money or not. It'll be just an awesome gym. That's the way to do it. That's yeah. the way to do it because that's yeah. what I'm gonna want to walk in. I'm not gonna want to walk in and see a bunch of people terrible, bunch of terrible, terrible, themselves. terrible business strategy. Micro for us growing. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Nobody ever yeah. share. Nobody to share it. Nobody to like talk about it. You never know. It could be one of those. It's like uh, Fight yeah. Club, dude. It's like, yeah. you know. You have to have the special handshake to get in or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that, you know? I yeah. mean, I, that's, I see, I think things like that will come. I mean, that used to be what was cool, right? Things that were cool when I was younger was yeah. like that the stuff that you, yeah, when you were onto yeah. something that not everybody knew about, like that was what made something cool. Yeah. And if it was like underground like that. So I do think that there's, there's possibility for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I think, room for I think cool. you're on to something. Oh, man. I think so. Anyway, sure. how'd, you, how'd you guys do with the storm? It was pretty uh, crazy. Oh, it was gnarly. Did you guys dude. lose power? Anybody lose I power? I did. Yeah. I didn't lose power. You yeah. always lose power, though, when stuff always, like that happens. Yeah. That's yeah. Part there's of always this one transformer, too. It just, like, blows every time. Like, I don't know Bro. if there's this, like, tree that just drops these huge branches on it or what. But, yeah, it, I mean, we have a, a generac, and so it kind of makes it a lot less painful. But, uh, dude, I swear, there's something... There's like one service person for like generators in like a hundred mile radius. Like there's like nobody to service these things. I'm like, what a business opportunity for somebody to come in and like have like a fleet of like, yeah. you know, service people and like, dude, it, there's so much need for that, especially with all the people that live in the woods and everything else, because power is always an issue, like yeah. just like shutting off. So. No, we went, we went to my parents' house because my mom wanted us over there for my birthday, and it was just windy and storming. And then that day, the the two little ones were just they were a handful. And right now, my daughter, my youngest, has transitioned into like 
just, she's a rascal. All of a sudden, you can't take your eyes off her. She'll climb anything and it's dangerous. So now it's like <laughs> exhausting to be with her and my three-year-old. So all day, you know, we were doing that, managing that or whatever. And we're just all tired. Then we go to my, my mom's house and it's raining and windy and whatever. And we get there and the kids are nuts and, you know, we're going to, and, and it can be stressful at my parents' house too. Cause you got my siblings there, their kids, the whole deal. It's loud. <laughs> So then we're getting ready to leave. I'm like, let's go. We get a text uh, from our neighbor that our power went out at, back at our house. Yeah. The problem was that we locked all the in inside doors with a top lock that there's no way to open from the outside. And I just realized, oh shit, we can't open the garage. <sighs> so I'm like, are we gonna have to sleep at my mom's house <laughs> with the kids? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. oh, bro. I was like, oh, nice. and I, was, I could feel like the, oh, the stress and anxiety. I'm like, I don't got nothing ready for tomorrow. I got to work tomorrow. What am I going to do? My daughter won't go to sleep. I'm like, ah. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to break the door down. That's what I'm going to do. So we go home. We get in the car. We drive home. And then I remembered that I did have a key to a door that we could come. I was fully prepared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was fully prepared. Yeah. And then just god. pay for the door to get fixed. Oh my god. And do all that. But it was, man, it was the wind was oh, yeah. wild. It's been one of the nastiest. We the, I can't tell you the last time, if ever, Katrina and I literally did nothing. I don't think we left we left the couch like twice to go and get get up to get food. Like I don't think we've had that lazy. Granted, she hurt her back on uh Friday. So like, again. Yeah, she she tweaked it pretty bad. I mean, she's blaming it on the marathon sex that we had on Friday night, but I don't think it was that because it was because <laughs> it was only two minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so after that, although she was doing some really acrobatic crazy things, so <laughs> yeah, could, sure. could have been the case. Could have been the case. So wow. no, she got out of the jacuzzi with Max on on. Uh, she was wheelbarrowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Stuff You're a big she, dude, bro. Yeah, weird stuff Heavy she was having me do. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, really, you want me to do that? That's kind of weird. It's like a good like, uh, like no, push no, down. So, so, She's gonna yeah. be so mad I said that on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, but she really did. She hurt her back and uh she tweaked something and uh she was like super immobile and, and laid around and put her on a heat pad and just laid up and watched movies. But I can't remember the last time that we had a, a storm that bad, man. It was it I mean, every all my shit was blowing around all in my backyard and stuff like that. And and the I have that California room with all that uh, that nice furniture outside yeah. and uh, normally it, it's designed to where the, it overhangs. And so I've got a good, you know, three, four feet before there's any carpet or like nice yeah. furniture, but the wind was blowing so hard. It was blowing. The rain the came in. Yeah. 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 So oh. I had to go like set up stuff to protect all that furniture and shit. So it was a, it was a uh, pain in the ass. So. Yeah. I had to cut our trip short. We were up in Truckee and then it was like, we had a little bit of snow, but it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, but there was just signs everywhere. Like if you are here Sunday at all, like you will be here through Tuesday, like just plan on that. Like you were, you were just going to get snowed in. And so we're like, we got to go. Yeah, yeah. I had to, we brought up the, uh, one of Ethan's friends too. So I was like, I was responsible for another oh, kid. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, I, we just got to Well, so off. I, I had this, this like realization. Well, I had two realizations. The, the first one, the fast one was that my little ones sleep, we use a hatch light and a hatch light, it'll like, there's different colors. So one means like we're getting ready for bed. One means you're sleeping. The other yeah. one means you get up and you train your kid with them and it's pretty good. And it makes, you know, white noise or rain sound or whatever to help them sleep. Well, that's, you got to plug those in. Mm -hmm. So you got a power outage. Your kid won't go to sleep mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're so used to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make my three-year-old go to sleep. He's got no, there's no power. Yeah, yeah. So I had to like sit in there with him until we got power like late at night. Yeah. Because he was scared. He could either, and he's used to this like yeah. sound machine. You're not just running it off your phone. Yeah, I run. I, I, run, we did, I run yeah. Brain FM when that happens because we yeah, use a hatch also. It. And Max my is, phone was was dying, and I had nowhere uh, to plug it in. Oh yeah. God! Because remember, we were at my mom's house. Here's the second. <laughs> here's the second realization that I had. I this was a, my this was a big realization that uh, my family, and maybe you could say it's about my culture, right? But my family in particular, boundaries don't exist. There are no boundaries. Jessica's mm -hmm. always trying to tell me about this, right? And yeah. I, I, you know, I grew up in it, so. It's hard for me to really see, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's true. They just, they simply do not exist. Like if you say something to someone in my family, like, Hey, you know, my kid doesn't want to be kissed. Don't go kiss them. Like, Oh yeah. Okay. No problem. And then they'll do it anyway. Or please. And then they don't, they'll do it or whatever. They just, there's no boundaries. Like to this day, if mail is delivered to my mom's house with my name on it and I go by, she'll hand it to me. It'll be open. She'll read, she'll <laughs> open she it. Opens. Yeah. <laughs> Till this day. So I'm like having these like realizations like, <laughs> God, I grew up without any freaking. Yeah. So I was talking to Jessica about that. She's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I mean, I moved out when I was 
Just imagine 20 or 21. I'm like, there. up until that age, like my mom would go and clean my room, go through my stuff. She's yeah. like, what? I'm like, yeah, she would just go through and yeah. she's like, well, how did you have privacy? I'm like, you learn to hide things in life. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hide things in life. That yeah. makes, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but none, no bound, like none. And that's just my, that's just how my family operates. Yeah, it's Katrina's like, family. Like they'll that. just, yeah. yeah. You and know, they don't really hide stuff though. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they, I mean, they operate from, it's what's hard, I think, for people like you and her to, why to see it is because they, they operate from a place of love. Sure. Right. So it's not like they're being intrusive. Like your mom's like so nosy. She's got to do that. It's no. just like, she's want to make sure you're okay. I want to yeah, make sure I, mean, I check your bills and make sure it wasn't just, something no. you had to miss. And so it was an emergency. Like that's how like they operate too, is like the play, it, they're coming from a place of love. And so, which is also the part that I always have to try and be compassionate when, when I'm challenged with it is because I know they don't, they don't mean any harm. I know that it's, that she's been conditioned that th this is how things are and this is normal, but it's like, that's the thing that I, we're always trying to, we're always trying to have that conversation, which is like, uh, let's agree that I'm not normal and you're not normal. <laughs> and then we're trying to land somewhere yeah, in the middle yeah, here. Yeah. Like that is the hardest part. It always was like, I was so not normal. And that is normal. It's like, no, it's not. No, that's not normal either. No, it's not. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. not no, That's not normal either because you were raised that way and you think it's a healthy and it's good. Yeah. Doesn't but, you necessarily... know, you go to like the average person and, you know, you say, hey, they're, they're taking pictures. Oh, I don't, don't want to be in a picture right now. They're like, okay, no problem. You think my family? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Don't Get worry about it. No, there. we'll take it. It's okay. You look fine. You look fine. We'll Get take it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're like, no, no, I don't want to take it. No, no, you look good. Don't worry about it. They'll do it anyway. It's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I said, I grew up with it. So I'm just like, whatever. now, how are you? So, cause one of the things I know that like, like Katrina is like working through, that's really challenging for her is to like, to tell her family or tell that's her no. That's the hardest thing that's in the, the world. That's the part that like, she, like, she, like, yeah, we just had this again where. It's hard, bro. It's hard because yeah. it's, I don't know how to explain it. She understands it. Right. But I don't know how to explain it because it, you grew up in a way so much that to even create those now feels like you're, um, you know, it's like disrespectful almost. Yes. Yes. Um, and that's like, how she, you, that's yeah. how she, that's how she, like, so this, Justin and I were talking off air before you came in here about Super Bowl, And, uh, you know, we, we had made plans. I've made plans for a couple of my, be my best friends who are like hardcore football fanatics mm -hmm. with me. And so like that, we're going to watch the Super Bowl. Well, come to find out, uh, Katrina's family, and this was just a couple nights ago. They text us on the group thread or like that. Like, Oh, one of our family members, Melissa, she got this big raise. Right. And so we celebrate that. And they're like, hey, let's plan it on Super Bowl weekend. We'll watch Super Bowl. We'll do all this. Let's have everybody over. Let's do a big party and we'll do the Super Bowl. And Katrina goes, uh, do you care if I invite everybody over? And I said, yeah, no. I said, no. Yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. And I'm just like, because they don't watch football. Yeah. And it's going to be about her racing. I want to watch football. That's yeah. how. And I plan that like that. And so she's like, well, what should I tell them? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that's uh, life, dude. I know what that's like. Exactly. Yeah, tell and them I, that I don't want them over. Exactly. That's what I was. I was just like, tell them we already have plans. You know what I'm saying? Or tell them no. You know what I'm saying? Or don't even tell them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we won't be there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah. to me, it's like that simple. But I see, it's and you not, see, I'm watching her. Like, I don't, she doesn't even know this, right? She's going to hear this on the podcast. Like, I was watching her like just stare at her phone for like fucking an hour trying to like formulate <laughs> what the conjure yes like, what like how do i fucking <laughs> phrase this so i don't insult my like she's afraid she's gonna insult, oh, it's, insult it's him weird. or be disrespectful yeah. to him and i'm like it's fucking easy you know what i'm saying like yeah. we we had already planned this like Cut a month in advance like we're it's like it is they're not big football fans they're more about yeah. the the that's, party that's for the her conundrum with super bowls too is like it, it turns into this like it's a party and like i'm like no i'm like invested in this game like yeah, that's I, how I, feel. I could care less about like oh who's bringing the dip and who's the, uh, <laughs> yeah. like get out of here dude like yeah. let me just like watch the game and like no. focus yeah, it's just yeah. it's just weird it's very strange but i mean i, I get it because i and she has the same thing and yeah. i can, I can see that and it's very similar, uh, you know, verbiage. Like, I don't yeah. want to disrespect them. Or I don't yeah. want to hurt their feelings. Yeah. So she's like wrestling. Well, then what happens too is because yeah. Jessica wants to, she wants to please people. So she has a tough time then drawing it herself because she doesn't want to disappoint anyone. But then what that does, it builds resentment or whatever. And then I'm on the other end and, you know, half the time I'm oblivious. So something will happen. I'll be oblivious. And she'll be like, why don't you back me up? I'm like, what are you talking about? That that's, thing that happened with whatever. Same, that's the same thing. I'm like, huh? Too. What do you mean? Yeah. Because yeah. it's so like, well, you know, it's tough. I'm literally becoming you, you don't see it. You from her, it. from yeah. her perspective, and it's the same thing that I, I said to her. I said, you know, what it makes me feel like is that you choose them over me all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm your partner. I'm it's you and I first, yeah. and then everybody else. And it's like, so, and but like her, oblivious to it too. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm choosing them. Like you are, though, yeah, in that situation. Yeah. Like, you're not asking it's me. It's a tough thing, bro. 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the... Because you have a dynamic with your family, especially if you're close with them. And it's... Uh, first, you have to become aware of it, which took me forever yeah. to become aware. Yeah. And then the second part is, oh, what do I do about it now? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, I got it. And then, ooh, I'm going to hurt people's feelings, whatever. So it's, And then also, you add in the other layer, how do you do it and not roll your wife under the bus? Right? Like, how do you do it and not be... Because the easy default is like, well, Jessica doesn't want to come yes, over. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, that's the easy yeah. default. She gets uncomfortable. Which I'm sure there's people like, in relationships oh, that they that yeah. the partner just does it. Like, fuck it. I'm not going to deal with my family. I'll just blame it on my husband. Yeah. I'll just blame it on my wife. That's so corny to do that. Like, yeah. say it. That, well, that's yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't give a fuck that care. much. You just tell well, them. Let them resent me. <laughs> but that's not bad. That's actually a good thing. Because yeah. that means that you can draw your own. And yeah. People eventually will start to respect That's right. I'm I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not... That's why I'm like, you just tell... That's why I say... Just tell them I said no. Yeah. 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 So Adam doesn't want to go. You know what I'm saying? He's got plans with that. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of that conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm, I'm very comfortable with who I am, how I want to yeah. run my family, how I want to do things like that. But I, I understand the dynamic because you guys both have very similar challenges, but she's the same way too. And it, this literally just happened this weekend. So I'm like wow. laughing. You hearing you talk about this because I was like, had this moment where I'm like watching her in the corner of my uh, eye on her phone, yeah, I just even, staring at it for like 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, what's, bro, what to say? I was telling Adam, I was like, I didn't have a chance to plan what I actually wanted to do. You know, all of a sudden these plans are happening outside of like, and I'm like a big fan of like, yeah. my team's actually in the Super Bowl. And I'm like, nobody even asked me what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know what? It's just so, it's so weird because even at the, at, you know, at four, I'm 45, right? So I'm even at 45 years old, I there are things that you you start to become aware of, that, and then you become aware that you were not before. Yeah. So it's like I start to see all this. Like I've been told this before, but it's very different to be told things than to actually like see them and, and go, oh yeah. shit, hold on a second, that's true. Like if somebody says don't do that, you just don't do it. Why wouldn't you do it? You know. Whereas before I was like, well, it's a big deal type of deal, you know, because I grew up that way. So you become aware and it's like, okay, how do I balance this now? How do I, how do I do this? You know, the good part about stressful. getting, the good part that I, get, I think about getting older, at least this is how I feel with Katrina and our relationship is like, we're, we're aware of these things enough now. I would say she's come like full circle on that too. And so there is at least this like uh, acceptance of each other, yeah. like how you're going to handle it. Like, you know, like if I, if I were to be, if I staunch about it, I'm not doing this. And she's like, I really want to go do this. Be like, okay, you know, you go do that. I'll go do this. And it's like, it's not a big fight. It's no, not it's big... not, but you know what? It took me, it took me forever. What took me forever. This I'm well aware of now, but what took me forever to even become aware of was the dysfunction around food that is so common in just in like, like in my family, in my culture, yeah. like they take pride in who can make a kid eat the most food. Okay. And I grew up with it so much that I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. Now it's like clear as hell. Like I'll see like my nephews sitting over there and everybody keeps trying to feed him and they're trying to convince him and who can distract him so they can fit more food in his mouth. And I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, this kid is well nourished. There is no reason. <laughs> like he's a thick, he's a strong, yeah. thick guy. Like, there is no reason. Like, that was a great mentality right after the Great Depression. That's that, what it that's, was. That's why, you know, that's like That's it's, exactly that. Generational, it's, that generationally. It's generational yeah. dysfunction. 100%. Generational uh, it's trauma. It's rooted in something probably healthy and good, that's which right. is ironic about yeah. that, right? It's just like, there's probably a time where like, hey, you need to make sure you're But it kidding. becomes generational because it's, it's, how you're, it's how you're raised. This feels normal. Then yes. you apply it. But I mean, and I get it. Like, you didn't know if you were going to get another meal. And so I it's know. like, you better eat this. And I got to figure out how to make you eat this. Otherwise, you are going to become malnourished because that was quite common. Yeah. Now it's like if my kid sits and doesn't want to eat, I'm like, okay, you don't have to eat, buddy. Not yeah. a big deal. And I can right. feel, yeah. I can feel yeah. the older There's people in my family. There's abundance everywhere. Bro, like, you freaking, understand? Like freaking oh, out. Oh, really. I can feel my mom in on the inside. Uh, yeah. She's like, she has to get up and move away. My mom has a hard time with that too. <laughs> so you're like thing. vacuuming the living room. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay busy. Because I told my kid he doesn't have, <laughs> no, you don't have to eat that, buddy. It's not a big deal. And your, she, I can your feel kid's them, so. passed up on my waffles. <laughs> you know, I had like a whole conversation with my mom about this. They're so mad, you know, that they would pass on waffles and they'd pass on like desserts and this oh. and that and i'm just like they don't need it oh bro it's just Dude. and i could see my siblings do it i used to do it you know now bro. i'm like aware of it so you just gotta that generational shit is so hard to break i mean it's shit that's so like that's 90 percent of therapy bro that's like 90 percent <laughs> of everybody who's in therapy is breaking fucking generational yeah. shit that's 100 percent yeah. yeah. maybe you, even higher than that do yeah. you guys have things in your family that like like certain things that are like in my family anxiety is like this is like what we have everybody has oh it. bro like anxiety right. is a thing 
And it's contagious and you learn it, right, from the people around you. Do you guys have anything like that in your family? Or yeah, well, I have a really bad trait that uh, I get from my family, which is like we have this like – Criticism. You, you don't know. You <laughs> just, don't speak to each other it. where it becomes like a, an oh. issue and then you just – Okay. Just disconnect. Yeah, just disconnect. Oh, yeah. So that's a really bad habit that I know that I have that is from that. You know, yeah. it's like that we've normalized that so much. There's just like – somebody upsets you or pisses you off, like, eh, whatever. So, yeah, you, know, you just have that ability to just like cut it off, you right. know? And so, which can be very unhealthy. Right. And uh, obviously I have other, now another side of a family that that's different for them to, to handle that. So I know that's an issue that I've always got to work yeah. on for sure. No, no. In my family, it's anxiety. And if they'll find something to be anxious about something oh, news mm -hmm. world events something's Ugh. happening right now what's happening there? oh my god that's so you bro oh that's so you bro i'm i'll tell you something right now i'm the calmest person in my family okay yeah. no actually that's not true I think, I think my, my brother probably is, is is probably one of the most uh, probably the calmest but it's it's in there dude it's like it's, oh, it's yeah. my family bro you know speak, no, yeah. go ahead justin sorry, sorry oh well we i was just gonna say we just find like i just grew up like we find what's wrong with everybody else <laughs> i was like okay i'm very aware of <laughs> what's so wrong and dysfunctional <laughs> yeah it's so much talking shit <laughs> that it's really hard for me to give people put-ups yeah. you know yeah. like and i've been really working on that yeah, like, yeah. like it's so uh, because i didn't like it you know and it's just but it Again, you build sort of like a callus and, and like a, yeah. a you know thick skin from it. So I definitely have thick skin uh, when people trying to like come at me or whatever. But it's like, dude, like that that's a problem, dude. Like yeah. growing up like that and like always like and it's always in like some kind of sarcastic, you know, snarky. But like that shit adds up, and you're yeah. like, not everybody's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like let's think better. <laughs> You know, on the on the positive note of family stuff, you know, kids, family, all that stuff, dude. I am so blown away. So, I one of the last episodes we recorded, my shout out was the um, uh, the number blocks. For yeah, Max. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys see the video I posted of him last night? No. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. my son. Oh, yeah, my son's pre K, pre bro. That's oh, yeah. four four years old, yeah. and yeah. I was able to do. That's great. Yeah, he was two plus two, four plus four, two plus two, three plus three, four yeah, plus yeah, four, all five, the all the way up to to ten plus ten is twenty. What's nine plus nine? Eighteen. Yes, last one. What's ten plus ten? Twenty. Yeah, little boy. That is a hundred percent that game. Like that's the, I can't take the credit for like dad that's being great. this great dad. I mean, of course I interact with him, and of course I play it with him a little bit, but he's become so obsessed with these number blocks and then the cartoon that goes along with Is he a numbers him. kid? Does he like numbers a lot? I mean, this is the first sign of that. Because you, cause you yeah, like numbers. Yes. So that's like the first sign of like, oh, wow, this maybe he's going to have that same same thing that I have. That's like great. Because that was what one of my few strengths in school was math. Like I loved, I loved math. I still love math and numbers, right? So to see him to do that was really, really cool, especially considering that we're going to hold him back, right? So we're holding him back this coming year. And also, and I'm sure any parent that's ever heard that from the teachers, you go, oh, in your stomach, yeah. you know, getting the news. Not that pre-K, yeah. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. It's like, oh, whatever. If your kid's like a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> then you go, oh. You're not going to graduate, What's going Johnny? on, buddy? You know, logically, I get it, but there's, yeah. that was the still. People, I, a lot of people intentionally do that. Yes. Because their age is on the cusp. Well, and, and he's that way. And they're smaller for sports and everything and, else. And he's, so, he's all yeah. the above, right? Yeah. So, but I, so, I mean- Granted, that's not like that's not how my brain operates, right? Like leadership yeah. rule number one, everything is my fault. What what could have I done better as a parent? Hundred percent. The two thing, the things that because the teachers are like, he shows signs of leadership. He raises his hand. He communicates with everybody. Everybody loves it. Like all these positive things. The the thing that he's held back on is his his confidence around writing the letters and actually writing the letters and numbers and cutting with his scissors. All dexterity stuff. All yeah. stuff connected to the feeding thing. Yeah. Hmm. So his development on his speech, and that, that has a lot to do with him feeding himself, we deprived that of him early on, thinking that, oh, whatever, you know, not a big deal. Didn't learn until we had the speech therapist that we handicapped him in that area a little bit. I shouldn't use that word because I know that's not, like, yeah. it's not necessarily true what happened, but we slowed his progress sure. down by doing that. And so here's another way that it's showing up is that he, the other thing I didn't do as a dad, I wish I would have done more. I remember thinking this, like I was going to do this more with him. And I maybe one time did it where, and you did a video the other day, I think of this with, uh, I don't know if it was your daughter or your son you did it with, where you were hanging, hanging him or her from the bar and seeing how long yeah. she could grip onto it. I wish, and so parents listening, <clears throat> I wish I would have done that more. Like, so we had good hand strength mm. be between feeding him longer than we should have, 
not doing more stuff like that where we, and we just, cause he wasn't really into the gymnastics yeah. and climbing stuff. So I didn't find ways to push it. And so now here we are. And what, it, what it's manifested in is that he doesn't have a lot of confidence with his hand, his hand strength and dexterity. And then his, his writing and it all has, it's all interconnected to that. Uh, everything else like, great on all other stuff and obviously with numbers like he's way ahead of where he should be stuff like that but that is enough that they're like we want him to be fully confident and so we're not telling you have to it's a recommendation on our part he's also young for his class already so it's not like he's yeah. going to be you know way older than everybody he'll be right in the same age because we started him so young so it's like but still that again the the the, the initial like you oh like what did I miss? Yeah, what course. did I not do? But those are the things that I wish we just had wait done. till we become teenagers and you really get hit with that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh what did I do? I, I hope I don't got a lot of it. I hope I do a good job. I mean, this is what they talk about, though, yeah. right? Everybody says it's an, it's impossible, right? As a parent, there's going to be things that you screw up on. There's going to be things that you didn't do, and so you know, here's an area where I mean, I take ownership on it. I don't, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to beat myself up over it, but I recognize that, you know, and if I was giving advice to somebody who's going to have kids these are areas we 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 shouldn't we should have let him feed himself from the jump mm. let it be a mess let it do all those things instead of caring more about how messy he was going to get and the house was going to get and then the, uh the other one was doing things where you were encouraging him to climb, even though he didn't like to climb still encouraging things that were going to strengthen, strengthen his hands and his grip yeah. yep well my, my 14 month old she she won't stand by herself she doesn't walk yet she does a cruising thing but she'll climb anything. It's really weird. It's like she she skipped like fifteen like steps. Like you, she'll climb anything to the point where you got to be careful. Yeah. Yet she refuses to stand or walk on her own. <laughs> but you'll see her climb things, and you're like, oh, how did she get up there? Hmm. You got to go grab her, pull her down, type of deal. And she'll <laughs> fall sometimes. <laughs> she also won't say papa. She refuses to say. She calls me mama. At first, I thought she was. <laughs> I, at first, I thought she was like taunting me. Like I'd say, I'd look at her, and go, "Papa," and she go, "Mama." I'd be like, "No, no, no, it's me." <laughs> now I realize that she, she calls me mom. She says "Mama" to me <laughs> and her mom. back on her, not to mom. Maybe that's, yes, a, maybe that? that's from yeah. the, the night feedings. Mama. That's what that is. Maybe yeah. she's connected, uh, yeah. connected the dots. I put on the fake boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen that? Oh. Yes. They actually make that's those ridiculous fake mm. boobs that you fill. You put milk in so that the dad can nurse the baby. Have you seen that, Doug? Uh, yeah. yeah. Talk about giving the kid a compliment. Why? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, you know? terrible. Talk dude. about confusing the shit. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's terrible. That's so stupid. Hey, another Get a random chest hair. Another. Like I got another message from somebody who I haven't spoken to in fifteen plus years, who sent me a message. Is hey, is this the real deal of the Caldera? Oh, because of our commercials. Yes. Yes. Do you know that I get recognized for our what's called white label ads, Caldera ad being one of them, more than I do for Mind Pump? I have people stop me and they yeah. go, oh, I've seen you before. And then I'll be like, oh, do you listen to Mind Pump? Like, oh, no, that's no, not it's it. a skincare thing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. Of all the things too, of all the products that we work with, I did, that's one that I would not have guessed that would have made this like random connection to all these people that I, that I haven't talked to for forever they see that and it's not like oh look you're famous or anything like that it's actually asking about the product like hey is this is this legit i saw you uh, advertising this or i like had that. someone ask yeah. me if i was a um, a fitness model i thought it was an i thought it was a compliment <laughs> and it wasn't because they thought i looked like a fitness model because they saw me on ads yeah <laughs> so they said oh you must this is what you do right you do you, you do commercials for yeah. like no i have a podcast for that's what i do yeah. But that product is, um, I mean, they, they. I, I would love to see the growth of Caldera over the last five years. I know, years. me too. The base layer and the serum. I mean, that's what I have right here on the, right here on my next. It exploded. Year. I that's I use that. I almost, every single. Day. I almost feel like they have uh, created, like, really widened the market for male skincare because before that, can you guys recall, like, a very popular men's skincare? No product that's why i didn't think it was going to do no. as well as it did but obviously there was a need there obviously mm -hmm. there's a there's a need for a product like that and i think the the few people that don't invest in it is because it's not cheap it's an expensive product but it goes for it lasts a long oh, yeah, time you put a drop that's the part that i always like explain to someone is like you know don't be fooled by the price on it because mm -hmm. it is it's not cheap it's, a, it's an expensive product but it'll last you a, a, a long time like i mean i don't even know how long this has been sitting on here how long i've been going through this but I use it every single day and swear by it for oh, sure. That's awesome. Speaking of which, I got a DM from a gentleman who used one of our uh, partners, uh, Zbiotics, and so he was—he's actually a scientist. And oh, he, really? Yes. And he was—he's like, I was fascinated by the science. So if people don't know, they Zbiotics, the probiotic, and they genetically modify the bacteria in there 
to break down acetaldehyde in the gut. So when you drink alcohol, uh, you're, it, some acetaldehyde is produced and that gets processed by the liver, but some of it's released in the gut and then it gets in your bloodstream and acetaldehyde makes you feel like garbage. So this essentially you take it before you drink alcohol and you'll feel better the next day. So he's like, I was fascinated by this science. And he goes, and I tried it. And he goes, and I can't believe how amazing it works. And then he went into how this science is going to like revolutionize everything in terms of not necessarily for alcohol, but rather modifying bacteria, bacteria yeah. to do all kinds of different things in the body, like produce more neurotransmitters. So if you're depressed or anxious, you could take a probiotic that specifically will help produce more. Well, remember when oh, we yeah. first partnered with them and we talked to him, he said like, this was like the low hanging fruit, right? Yeah. This was the easy. Yeah. This was oh. like an easy product that everybody could connect to and understand mm -hmm. and they could show people dramatic results, but this was not like the big vision for the company. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, we're investors, right? So that was one of the things that I thought was, we all thought was so fascinating was, oh wow, as amazing as this product is, th this is like barely scratching yeah. the surface of the potential of these GMO type products that can alter like what you're saying. Like, yeah. So it's going to be really fast. You know, speaking of that, I, when was our last quarterly update from them? Have you it's seen? It's been a while. Yeah, we're yeah. due for that. You should make a note, Doug, for me to follow up on them and reach out to them. I'm curious to see how, how the company is yeah. doing because we haven't, I don't think I've seen a quarterly update. Great. So I also wanted to bring up, uh, so we have our trainer forum now. So a new forum for trainers and coaches who went through or have the mind pump trainer course. So right now it's a small group. Um, less than a thousand people in there and people are sharing their stories of, you know, building their business. So like, so I, I wanted to share one cause it's, you know, I, I take for granted, or I'd say we took for granted just how the, the things that we did when we were trainers, how, um, effective they were. And I think I, 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 I don't know about you guys, but I assumed that they were like yeah. people, common knowledge, like people did these things. They're still teaching it. Like yeah. All these principles. So one of the things that we taught in the course um, was how to get leads. And one way you get leads, very easy, is you set up a body fat testing booth. You can set it up in businesses. You use calipers because it gives you time to talk to people. And you have a chart that tells people different body fat percentage. And it's, people want to test their body fat. And it's a great way to converse with people. And we talk all about it in the course, how to use it, how to, how to convert, whatever. Anyway, um, Rich Gonzalez in our forum um, posted about it. He did it, and um, he seven, got seven appointments. Right? Seven appointments, R yeah. boom, right away. Yeah, seven appointments for uh, for setting up a body fat testing booth, and he did this in a I think it was a supplement store. Yeah, mm -hmm. at Vitamin Shop. You know, and smart. Connect this to the talk that I did on the three free day training that we put out there of understanding how many people you need to connect and how many appointments you need to book to just decide like how much money you want to make, mm -hmm. which is like one of the things that I was always fascinated that no trainer knew. Like I would go around talking to these trainers or back when I used to inherit staff. Look, if you do a good job, I'll tell you right now with those numbers, if I booked seven assessments from a body fat test booth, I could pretty much guarantee that would turn into at least two clients. Mm -hmm. That's it. Two right there. Boom. Yeah. Two clients from what probably took them an hour. It was probably an hour body fat test. Uh, booth. Well, I think it those. just trainers are are kind of uh, throwing spaghetti on the wall, and they're not really focused on like I can really make predictable income, uh, especially if they're outside of like the corporate gym setting. They're getting a paycheck. Um, it's really difficult to to make predictable income unless you have systems like that that you're teaching. Like here's as many appointments that you need to book, you know, cause the average is going to be this amount. And then now you can, you know, accurately sort of like structure that for your month. So the income can keep coming in. You have to keep doing it cause you know, that dries up and then you're, you're left with whatever you have client wise. I, I think the biggest problem is that we, we've lumped trainers into the, the health space because technically they are. And when you think about health professionals, doctors, nurses, physical therapists, people like that, you don't think about sales and the importance of that as much. It's more around education and experience. Right. And so for since the beginning of time that trainers have existed as far as the market is concerned, the emphasis has always been put on education. It's always been put on how many certifications, do you understand biomechanics, do you understand nutrition? And, you know, you would tout your certs and your degrees and all that. It's been heavily weighted on that. Now, the irony of that was all the hundreds of trainers that have worked for me in the decades that we worked as, you know, managers in the fitness space, the trainers that were the most successful were not the most educated. 
they weren't the ones with the most certifications. It was the ones that could effectively communicate or sell the best, sell themselves the best, were the most successful trainers. Yet, no courses, no certifications, nobody puts emphasis on that that part no. when it was the most important thing. And so I think that that's where we've missed for so long in this space. Obviously, why we, we tried to fill this gap. Our goal was not, are we going to try and compete with NASM or NCSF or these other national certifications? No, it was, there's a need in the market for somebody to teach these trainers how to build and scale a business. And nobody is really servicing that market, not like what we thought needed to be done. And I think that was the vision here. And to your point about the forum, this is also why too, in the for this forum, I plan to share more of the behind the scenes of the business, the numbers, the mat, like yeah. what happens when we launch a program, how much does it sell and what did it cost us to build that? And, oh, when we do this webinar, like how many leads do we get from that? Because that is the part that I felt like <clears throat> not a lot of people share that. And I want to be able to share that with that community so they have insight to even how we're figuring, how we figured yeah. things out to get here. Yeah, if you want to learn, that's at mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. And by the way, we're I, I want to mention this too. We're going to be at the Arnold, <clears throat> uh, the Arnold Classic, that whole festival there. And if you're a trainer or coach, please come and say hi to us and stop by. And I think we're going to try and schedule a talk, right? Yeah, the, I, we're, we're trying to nail down a, a local gym that we can use that I we hope, can meet uh, with trainers. And I would love, yes, that's what I would love. Yeah, yeah. Talk so to trainers we, and we will, we will. So if you're, if you're planning on being there, I think it's March 1st through the 3rd or something like that. Is second, that March 1st and 2nd. We'll okay. Be yeah. So you could, and for the Arnold Classic, it's arnoldsports.com if you want to find out more about that. And yeah. And at the Arnold Classic, and then between now and then, we will drill down a, a day and time uh, where we'll get access to a gym that we can use where we can uh, meet and greet with people. Totally. Look, children's vitamins are typically just candy. Okay. They're gummy candies with a little bit of nutrients put in there. Anyway, there's a company called Haya. That makes a multivitamin that doesn't have a bunch of sugar. It's not candy. And it has adequate doses of nutrients that your children need. It's the best multivitamin for kids you'll find anywhere. Go check them out. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is JP from Canada. JP, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, bonjour, guys. How are you today? We're good. Good. Yeah, but thank you very much for taking uh, taking my call. And uh, everybody's always uh, uh, being very impressed seeing you guys. So I'm going to try, try to lie today and not act impressed. But I have no choice else. I'm going to lose all my, my English today. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> all right. So I'll go ahead with, with my question I sent uh, via email. Uh, my question today is about my weak squat. Uh, why weak? Well, if I can squat it, I can bench it. And I'm totally not a strong bencher. Um, every time I'm trying to go over 100 pounds, issues appear. It usually manifests itself by like a short electric shock in the, in the lower back, like, like the muscle close to the spine. Mm. After that, I'm going to be stiff like in the lower, lower back for a couple of days. When you try to get up from a seated position, it's always very stiff. So I can squat heavier if, even when no pain manifests. I try MAPS Red uh, many times, and it's usually the same story. It's no gain. So I went on a, hunt, on a hunt to find a problem. Is it recruitment, imbalance, form, ankles, hips, witchcraft? Uh, I heard them all when asking <laughs> around. Uh, I tried diagnosing the issue going back to MAPS Prime that I bought years ago. I have an obvious fail in Zone 3 coming from the butt twink at the bottom of the squat. So I'm losing contact for, from the pole when doing the test. Uh, with that, I'm trying adding primary exercises to my routine, like 90-90s, but with no, not much improvement. Prime has a lot of op options outside primers and plenty to select from. So not being a professional, it's hard to pick the right stuff. And there's like a certain limit to self-diagnosing. Uh, also from the butt, butt twink problem, I listened to the glutes mastercraft. One thing that struck home when listening to the glute masterclass is about the glutes engagement during the big lift. Thinking back to my squat, I usually feel most of it in my legs, not in my butt. So having a relatively flat butt, I thought maybe there was something there. And finally, I, I purchased symmetry, thinking that maybe this was an issue from front to back that maybe symmetry could address. So that's the reason why I purchased this program. Um, what's changed since my question? I did purchase Maps Prime Pro 
to investigate a little bit more. There's great stuff in there, but I think I had just added like more variables into my investigation and now everything looks wrong. So I don't know where, <laughs> where to look at. Super uh, I've just completed map symmetry and completed my fave four, the five by fives. Uh, I do feel a little bit stronger doing that program, but I also feel like I'm on a on, on thin line that everything could fall apart from there and maybe that I'm not that strong. And finally, I know you guys launched Maps 40 Plus not long ago, and I'm actually I'm 43. So I think you guys have a different approach to squatting from this program, maybe to learn uh, from there and not doing the full full movement. Okay. So with all that, I'm kind of scared mm. with weight on the bar. I have some ideas of what's happening, but there's a lot of variables, a lot of things that can happen. I think that can go wrong. It's getting like pretty confusing from there. Okay. 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 Before we answer all this, are you hanging upside down right now? I just have to. Have to <laughs> it looks like the ground on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, ceiling. Yeah. I'm oh, very yeah. confused. I have some. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so some, some things to, to improve the sound in my room. Cause there, there's a room just upstairs and it was really noisy. Nice. It's a very small room <laughs> here. So this, the sound is bouncing everywhere. So <laughs> nice. yeah, it looks right. weird, but I can flip, but no. <laughs> yeah. It was like spinal traction. Right? All right. So, um, okay. So it's a shooting pain that you feel in your low back and it, does it, yeah, the, the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The, mo the movement is fine. I can, I can squat deep and go up, but at certain moments going to like, like pinch and, and really that's, get that's, stiff at that moment. That's a nerve. Yeah. So you, you might have an impinged nerve. Have you ever had a back injury or have you ever been told you have a slip disc or herniated disc? I, I I had like a small, very small hernia in the lower back like 10 years ago. Okay. And we were able to fix it doing some physical therapy and some traction to try to pull the, yeah. the to pull it back inside. So that went well during this process. Uh, since then, in the last 10 years, I've been using a standing desk. I've been trying to avoid sitting position yeah. and give me all the chance to not use my back poorly. But in that movement, and even sometimes with, when doing good mornings, I could, it's like very risky yeah. that I get hurt doing those movements. Yeah, yeah. there's you, excessive pelvic tilt. I mean, it right? could, but yeah. you're, there's an impinged nerve. So, that, any, <laughs> okay, so when, when you feel a zing or electric or heat or like a, a, a shooting, sudden sharp. shooting sharp pain, yeah. that's a nerve. Uh -huh. So okay. it's not muscular. There's a, there's a nerve that's being impinged. It could be the herniated disc. Uh -huh. Um, so you, the physical therapy, you want to, you want to do some physical therapy to help alleviate whatever's being impinged. In the meantime, okay. I don't think you should do any bilateral loaded exercises. I don't think you should do good mornings. I don't think you should do deadlifts and I don't think you should do squats okay. because the nerve is being impinged. And if you impinge the nerve hard enough, that's not, a, you don't want that. Okay. Uh, -huh. uh so we want to identify where the impingement's happening and then do physical therapy specifically to help with that. Now, did you work with a physical therapist uh, 10 yeah. years ago? Yeah, we did. We did uh, uh, a couple of treatments, different treatments to make sure that everything was going fine. It's, and I didn't have issues uh, until then. But that being said, before doing Maps Red and everything, I used to do a lot of body weight stuff. So I think you can get away with stuff when you just only do body weight. Yeah. But when I stack putting some weights yep. on that's where yeah, it feels yeah. very because you're loading yeah you're loading the spine. spine and if so if the space if your nerve is like almost impinged and you yeah. add a little bit of movement and it push, pushes on that nerve um uh -huh. then you're going to feel it and it's going to feel like like you just said so um are you familiar with eldoa no i'm done okay we're going to send you a, a a link to a youtube video that i did a long time ago with L, with a, a an eldoa specialist so this is traction through using the the fascia of the body. And it's quite effective. You do it on yourself. Uh, yeah, you do it on yourself. It's very effective at spinal traction. In the meantime, I would only do unilateral exercises. And I, so, so symmetry is a great workout for you to continue to go through. And I would not do the last phase. I, I would skip okay. the last phase and continue to go through map symmetry. In the meantime, I would search for a specific diagnosis mm -hmm. so you can address this issue. Otherwise, it's... Yeah, Otherwise, you're, you're, you're professional. You're playing with, yeah. You're gonna be playing with fire. How how yeah. good how good are you about being consistent with training like your core and abs? Uh, I I am uh, currently doing symmetry. Symmetry was three days a week, and I used the other two days during the week to do ab ab uh, ab training. Okay. 
and a little bit of lower back. Okay. Yeah, I would like you to do support it. Yeah, I would like you to do more like counter rotation and stability exercises for your core. Um, like to, yeah, to prevent that impingement because uh, lumbar flexion, like you're going to get from ab exercises, uh -huh. totally fine unless there's a herniated disc and you're moving in a way that might not be appropriate. So, like, I would go. I was actually thinking no BS six pack abs. Though. You have a, the uh, much, hip flexor deactivator in there. You have exercises in there that you do, but because of the lumbar flexion, and if this is indeed what I think it is, I would want to stay away from any type of fatigue around lumbar flexion mm. because uh -huh. move, yeah, just just a little off. You know, which would be fine for most people, and I say off. What I mean is a deviation, right? Slight deviation is going to cause can potentially cause you problems. So I would seek somebody to do physical therapy. Map symmetry mm -hmm. seems to be fine. Don't do the last phase, and then watch the Eldoa video and practice okay. that 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 traction on yourself. So what traction essentially does is it opens up the space between the spinal column. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why Eldoa is what I prefer over like an inversion table or something like that is because you're using your it's body's active. own strength and support to create traction. You're not just using gravity. Right. Right. It's not passive. It's active, in other words. Two, two more questions right. that I have. One, um, did you ever play with elevating your heels when you squatted? No, no, I don't. I've been, I've been running before i was i was a long distance runner a runner and i did a long of uh, a lot of uh, barefoot running and uh not not elevated shoes okay so I, I, I always have plain shoes i don't have anything elevated i know some people told me maybe you should elevate elevate the the ankles so it might solve the butt twink a little bit but i i didn't experiment with it yet yeah, that's that's why I'm asking that, and which would, by the way, that leads to that it could be ankle mobility that would be causing the wink, right? So, and the wink is uh -huh. just making the issue. It doesn't solve if it's a nerve issue, like Sal is alluding to. It doesn't solve that, but it definitely will it'll, uh, make the squat the sa safer. Yeah. yeah, safer and more yeah. comfortable. So um, that was. And then the other question I had, like uh, when you do like Bulgarian split squats, how does that feel? Like, do you do those ever? Have you done those? Yeah, well, the, I, th I think there were a couple in, in in symmetry. Yeah, and 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 those feel fine. Okay. Good. Uh, I th I think since it's a new movement, maybe I'm a little bit more aware of what's happening and I'm trying to do it right. Whereas mm -hmm. squat, I've been squatting a lot, but probably probably not squatting perfectly. So I, pr I probably was getting away with things that I'm not now. But yeah, the other other movement are fine. Uh, for deadlift, for deadlift, I bought myself a, a trap bar, so I, I'm doing doing deadlift with those, and those are doing fine. But it's really the squat and good mornings that that are more dangerous movement for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like I said, I would I would avoid uh, bilateral loading of the spine for now, until okay. you can get an a, an accurate diagnosis, and then in in and in the meantime, stick to to map symmetry phase one through three. Okay. J JP, so I just got. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. I just got forty plus. Should I do that? Also, or uh, should I go back to stick with symmetry? symmetry for now? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, okay. yeah, for now. So, you are you better recruitment? Patterns. JP, are you already in our forum? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Yeah, just keep us updated. So, uh, just give us an update on the feedback you're getting and what's going on, and then we can kind of so you have most all of our programs that I, we would recommend you to get. So, we can just kind of uh, as we go through the process, give you advise yeah. you which direction to go from there. Okay, and I was wondering about uh, old time strength. Is is there stuff in there that could help me not yet. with those issues without loading Eventually. the bar? Or? Not not yet. Eventually, yeah. yes, but okay. not yet. Yeah, we got we got to figure okay. out. Let's get an accurate yeah. diagnosis, and let's, then and let's move when we're there. ready to load, you know, substantially, that would be the direction uh -huh. for sure. All right, makes sense. All right. Uh, quick closing comment before I go. I've been recommending your pro your programs uh, to my family, to my friends around here. Awesome. And everybody that I talk to is enjoying it and they listen to the podcast and they, they really love it. But uh, everybody around here, and, and I know it sounds from my accent that we are all French speakers. Some people have English in second or third language. So if ever you guys want to go ahead and work to reach the old market and translate your stuff and offer them to other people, um, just give me a call. It's, it's, it's wonderful programs. People are, are enjoying it, but I'm playing a lot of translation to, of to help people going through it. So one day ever you want to reach the French market, let me know. Yeah. We're, at, we're right. actually having a meeting today. Yeah. Just so you know. yeah. We're, yeah. we're trying to branch yeah, yeah. out eventually. I hate, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, AI is doing it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Have, are, yeah, you familiar, are you familiar job. with uh, labs.hegen.com? So labs.hegen.com. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm not sure, no. Yeah, check it out. So we're, Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, JP. You got it, man. See you around. So you got it. Yeah, you know, it would be, it's, uh, it's so valuable for the average person to discern between muscle pain and nerve pain because mm -hmm. both of them, there, 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 there's some very specific characteristics that come with nerve pain yeah. and it would help. It's elusive if you don't know what those are. Yeah. So if it's like numbness, tingling, burning, uh, if it's a Sharpness, sharp zing, yeah. you know, like if it's a pain that radiates and goes up and down your leg or up and down your back, like that's nerve pain. And if, if you don't identify it as nerve pain, you know, what you'll do is address the muscle mm -hmm. or address the, like, oh, it's my... It's, you know, this part of my body, foam roll it, smack, you know, massage it, whatever. But the nerve itself is sending the signal and it's being impinged. I, I would like to see the squat because it does seem like, and, and the good morning is obviously you have an excess, excessive anterior pelvic tilt kind of naturally for most people. And if you already have that issue, it sounds like that's the only thing that where he's feeling this. And so is it possible that it's so excessive that that's what's pinching the nerve? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I mean, it's it's excessive enough to pinch the nerve. That's yeah, what I'm. Yeah. That's but what I'm the fact that he said it, he had a herniated disc it was like, that well, was, that yeah, was a confirmation. right, right. So that makes because herniated disc doesn't go away. No. It's just still herniated. You just you end up strengthening support around it. But he should use this time too to address one of those things you brought up with his ankles and like, yeah. like mobility practices. You got to rebuild those better patterns so that way now, like once that gets addressed, you know it. Uh, at the same time, you'll be able to kind of build better mechanics along yeah. the totally. process. Our next caller is Bryn from California. Hi, Bryn. Hi. How can we help you? So um, I sent over an email. Um, I guess I could just read like kind of off my question. Mm -hmm. um, I lo have lost almost 130 pounds in the last year. Wow. Um, I had gastric sleeve surgery in May of 2023. Um, and I've lost about 110 pounds of, or 100 pounds of that since then. Um, I was working out consistently as soon as I got clearance, but just doing like the, like, you know, body pump group fitness kind of stuff. And I knew I wanted to get more confident, like in the weight room section. So I hired a coach and I've been working with them for the last like four months, but they only have me on like 1100 calories a day. And I'm doing like an hour and 15 minutes of strength training five days a week with 30 minutes of cardio. So I figured that was a little much. So I went ahead and um, bought the body transformation and started anabolic this week. But I'm kind of like at a loss about like where to go with my macros because I feel like I'm kind of in a unique situation in that like at 1100 calories, that's still more than I was eating six months ago. But like I want to be able to have a little bit more like flexibility in my you know, calories and stuff. So I just am kind of like, where do I go right here? Where do I go from here? Like macro wise. Yeah. Well, you got to eat, you're going to have to eat more, especially if you're strength training. And yeah. You wanna build, I know. <laughs> yeah. You want to build metabolism muscle. You could just slowly ramp it up. Mm -hmm. So you could go up. You're actually in a pretty good place, by the way. It's not, you're not in a bad spot. I know I, it's low calorie, but yeah, I would go up. I would go up 150 calories, keep it there for a few weeks, see how you feel. And then do it again, bump it okay. another 150 and then slowly bring it up to a point where you feel, and if you're doing good strength training, you're just going to get stronger and you'll build okay. muscle and speed up. Yeah. Your metabolism. Now you had gastric uh, sleeve, so you can't eat a lot at one time, right? So you're eating a bunch of small Correct. meals. Yeah. And I am required, like I have no problem hitting my protein, but I do use like, I do have to use like some protein powder or a bar. Like I'm out and about a lot. So, um, that helps me because they're small portions, but high protein. Yeah. Why do I do you, use those throughout the day. Why do you want to eat more then if, if you're having trouble eating more? Like, how Well, I just didn't know if I can, I can eat more, but I just didn't know if I like will put on muscle yep. like I would like to at the calories I'm at. Oh, you, you'll, yeah, you, you'll, you're going to probably need to eat more to, yeah, to put on, more. to put on some muscle. The challenge yeah. with gastric sleeves or bypass or those types of procedures is, are things like nutrient uh, deficiencies mm -hmm. can sometimes become an issue. Right. And then it can be an issue to, to consume enough to go in a direction of building or whatnot. So you're probably going right. to have to eat like a bodybuilder, meaning like six or seven meals a day and, 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 meal, pre and meal prep. Okay. Yeah. I do meal prep now and I just had all of my labs done 
um, like all vi- full vitamin panel, all that kind of stuff. And I take a shit ton of vitamins yeah. <laughs> every day. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty good. Like all my levels were good with that. So like, I don't know, like, should I just, you know, right now I'm eating like egg whites. Should I have yes. more whole eggs? Yes. Things like yes. Eat the yes. Egg. And I'm looking at your fat intake right now and Slow. you're barely eating enough fat. Yes. Uh, essential. To, yeah. You're at 35 grams of fat. In fact, uh, fat soluble vitamins tend to be the deficiencies that people with gastric, uh, you know, uh, procedures tend to get. If okay. you don't consume enough fat, your body will not thrive, right? So 35 grams is, I, I, I would have you, I mean, no less than 50 grams. Is yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's a result. That's a re- that, that's the one drawback of getting your protein source from like- uh, Super lean from, sources. Yeah, from yeah. like a whey or a powder is that a lot of those are really low in fat. And so this is a case where I'd really be encouraging you to do things like salmon, like chicken thighs, like steak, like- I'd be pushing okay. you in the, that direction. That'll naturally bring your fat up and hit your protein. So I'd be pushing you in the protein to obviously keeping you in there. It sounds like you're doing a good job of that. But because you're having to get some of that from powders, those powders are so low in fat that you're not getting enough fat, and that's going to be essential yeah. too. So I'm really trying to get you in the direction of, like I said, uh, chicken thighs, salmon, and steak would be great sources of of protein. Yeah, for whole you. eggs. Are you and whole eggs? Yeah. Yes. Are you taking digestive enzymes? How do you are you digesting what you're eating? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I take digestive enzymes. Like occasionally, if I eat something, like sometimes if I eat like like a drier meat type situation, like, or a lot of just like heavy meat. Sometimes I'll take, um, like digestive enzymes right afterwards. Yeah. I have like some chewable ones that I could take, but I don't take those every day. I did start the seed probiotic okay, after you talking about it. Um, and I take, a like a bariatric multivitamin. I take D zinc, um, magnesium. Okay. Fish oil. Yeah. I would <laughs> take, so calcium. T- as you bump up your fat intake, I would also take a digestive enzyme with each meal. Just okay. yeah, because your your um your absorption is a bit limited. And so breaking these breaking it down may pose an issue. And digestive enzymes are beneficial for most people. They're inexpensive. So with every meal, I would take some digestive enzymes as you start to bump the calories up. But I would bump, yeah, I would, I would, I mean, your protein's okay. I would just make your protein sources more fatty. And that should give you that should give you the 150, 200 calories mm-hmm. that we're looking for mm-hmm. right now. And then slowly over time, you can you can start to bump that up. I mean, there's no reason why you you can't be at some point around 2,000 calories and just feeling right. strong. Yeah, that, I mean that's what I want. Like the the bypass was or the sleeve surgery I had. Like I've tried everything over you know so many years sure. to yo yo. Sure, sure. And what did for me, even though like, yes, it helped my, like, I mean, just physically not be able to eat so much for a while, but like it changed my mindset to where like, okay, this is just how I live now. Right. Like opposed to being like on a diet or on a new training program or on a new, like, oh, yeah. this is just how I live now. Yeah. Now I have another question. Yes. <laughs> I've have gone into a good habit about being at the gym five days a week and I kind of love it. I know with anabolic, I can't, I, you know, I'm not doing, I'm just trigger working, doing my trigger workouts on some of those days, is it okay to still, because I'm an esthetician. And so at our office, like there's a lot of times I'm sitting down doing facials all day. Um, can I still on those days do like 20 minutes of like light walking on, like, you know, oh, yeah. easy yeah. walking. At the gym? Oh yeah. yeah walking, walking is great. Mobility w- yeah. work would be good. Yoga would be good. Like just, just, okay. yeah. Stuff that's Think of think of things you can do that are recuperative or regenerative. I don't even mind if you walk for like an hour if you wanted okay. to. Yeah, you, oh, you, you can, walking is okay. Getting yeah. those steps in Just like activity. that, good movement. Especially if you know you have a kind of a sedentary job. I'm I'm super pro that. Just avoid the getting after it, stairmaster, pushing right. hard on the elliptical. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't try. Yeah, and and low level heart. Kind of like where I was at with my last coach, which I'm no longer doing. But like, it was like an hour and fifteen minutes of glutes and hamstrings and then 25 minutes of stairmaster intervals no and i would just god no smoke. yeah <laughs> god no coaches? god no yeah no 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 yeah we don't in your case we don't have a lot of calories that need to be burning so no. i mean so the burning okay. calorie approach is a terrible yeah. approach for you we're trying to build muscle yeah, all building right now okay yep okay yep thank you oh I, fair way to ask one other question go ahead, sure. go ahead. So I just started doing squats with the barbell. Like I did my first um, pre-phase workout uh-huh. and I just in the mirror, if I like, if I really, really think about it, I could fix it. But if I'm just like doing my reps, I like my hips kind of shift a little bit on mm. the way down. Mm. 
Um, I was able to pass all the compass stuff on the prime, hmm. but like what is it's a strength issue. Asymmetry. asymmetry. Yeah. It's a strength issue. And I'll say this on all strength training exercises, do not just go through the movement. So it is not right. cardio. So you okay. need to be, every time you do a, a rep, you need to be thinking very consciously of the rep. Otherwise yeah. your body will do what it yeah. wants. Lighten the, lighten the load a tiny bit and go really slow. Yep. Because mm -hmm. like you said, you know already, like and, if I'm aware of it, I won't do it. So stay aware of it and slow it down and, even more. And then you'll train it to do, you'll train yourself to be able to do it right. Yeah. Uh, if you do it enough. Your body's just looking for stability wherever it can find it. So it'll go back okay. to the sort of like patterns you've established. So you got to read. Uh, readjust your patterns and really focus on dialing that that in. Brent, are you go. are you in the forum? I just um just got like I just did it over the weekend with the, the discount, so I should be in it today. I just haven't. Okay, cool. good. So yeah. that's the best thing you could do is as you go through this process yep. is is just to update us. You can even give it like a lot of people do videos of their squats okay. and movements. So if you have another question like that, um, we've got movement specialists in there like Dr. Brink, and of course we're in there. So okay. definitely uh, share share with the community in there. It's been it's it's incredible in there. Awesome, thank right. you guys so much. I'm so excited I found you guys. I was listening like it like really changed my mindset around strength training. So thank awesome. you, awesome, thanks, Great. Brian. Awesome, thank you. You got it. Um, boy, I hate fitness coaches. I hate a lot of them. <laughs> I don't hate fitness coaches. She's like, she's I eating, love hey, some. She's eating 1,100 calories, and they're like, "Yeah, let's do stairmaster. Yeah, let's a, burn and gas. <laughs> you had burn, gastric burn. sleeve." <laughs> I like you need to Why burn. You I, want listen, to burn calories listen right from now. Now, I'm telling people listening right now, if you hire yourself a fitness coach and you want to know if they're good or not, ask them if they have our coaching course. That's there one way to know because there's a lot of terrible ones out there. We got to somehow. They're not just bad. That's like, yeah. that's not just like kind of wrong. It's just the, yeah, it's opposite. That's the opposite, opposite. of yeah, what you need to do. It's absolutely, it's so frustrating to hear shit like that from people in our field. It makes I, me I tell you what though, uh, she, we got they. The, I mean, the audience that is on YouTube will get a chance to see because she sent over her pictures. Like, she looks great. She's in a great place right now too. Yeah. I mean, she, a couple tweaks like that. Si simply getting her to eat whole foods and the three main, the salmon, and the thighs, bump and, some fat. Yeah, yeah, that'll bump her fat naturally. That'll increase the calories yeah. naturally. Yeah. That that tip alone and falling anabolic. Watch what happens. Yep, yep. Our next caller is Casey from Texas. What's up, Casey? Welcome back, man. What up, guy? Hey guys, thanks for doing this. How are you doing, man? You got it. What's happening? How can we help you? Not much. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to first give you background. I've been lifting for like 15 years and uh, I just did it thinking that I can't reach any sort of goals because of my genetics. And then I found Mike Matthews like four years ago and learned about, you know, calories in versus calories out, the whole thing. And so for the first time, I started to uh, to actually reach some goals. Um, and so what I ended up doing was hiring a coach to do one on one stuff for a year. And this guy had me bulk from 145 to 175. And I sent you a photo of what that looks like. Yeah, we're looking at it right now. All right, cool. So after a year of that, I figured I'm just going to take a break because a lot of it conflicted with mind pump stuff, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to, you know, keep going with that guy. So from there, I've been cutting and you can see where I'm at now. Uh -huh. My plan. So the whole reason I'm calling you is this. I'm going to tell you my plan and then you tell me if my plan sucks. But whatever <laughs> you tell me is exactly what I'm going to do for the next five years, whatever. Imagine I'm someone who walks into your gym. I'm a client you know is going to follow what you say to the letter, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's my plan. Okay. Is to cut down to 10% and then do a bulk to 15, cut to 10. Bulk to 15, cut to 10, over and over and over. Ad infinitum. Is like, that a good plan or no? I, I mean, like, generally. I like, I like, let me tell you what I think went wrong with your 54-week bulk. Do you Just know what your body fat percentage was at the 175? Honestly, no. Um, I think, I think you, yeah. I mean, I think you. I can tell without him even telling us that you you put way more body fat on than yeah. you needed because right now you're you're. I'm looking. You're nine pounds different than where you were before the starting point, right? Right. So you put on way more body fat just to add a little bit of muscle, and at the end of it, it's gonna be it's gonna be like you had to put thirty pounds on just to gain a six five or six pounds of muscle. 
which that wasn't necessary. Exactly. It wasn't necessary exactly. to bulk that aggressively. And your your thought process of doing this, go go 15 pounds and come down 10 and doing that strategy where you're doing like uh, mini cuts, mini bulks like we like is going to be a better strategy for the long term and you'll and you'll end up building more muscle in my opinion. Yeah, so so the the second thing I'll add is I think you should track and it sounds like you're going to track body fat percentage because if the scale goes up, you want to look at the trends and say okay, you know, uh, I gained 10 pounds on the scale. Oh, it looks like 8 pounds of that or 9 pounds of that was body fat. So this isn't really too successful and typically that means it's your programming. Typically it's a workout programming. And the calories might be a little too high. Here's what I think you should do. I think I don't know if a five percent swing back and forth from bulk to cut is going to be the best approach. That's a pretty big swing. What I would probably do is is have you bulk up to thirteen percent and then bring it down to maybe eleven percent or something like that. And you could do mini bulk, mini cut just by measuring body fat percentage, or you could do a relatively consistent bulk where it's like three week bulk. One week mini cut, three week bulk, one week mini cut. That's another approach that you can do while tracking body how do you fat. Know they, how do you know on the mini cut? Because I've heard you guys um, talk about the four, one, three, one. How do you know in such a short amount of time that you've added the correct amount of calories? Because sometimes, you know, I could add what I think is a bulk, but then after three weeks, I'm like, oh my God, that's more like maintenance. Yeah. Right. And so it took me and then I'm like, okay, now I'll correct. Now I'm really on a bulk. You know what I mean? That's what I'm concerned about with the three on one off type thing. That's what I'm concerned about. No, hundred percent. You go by feel. So if you, let's say you bump your calories up to a, an amount that you feel is a bulk, here's what you're looking for. You're looking for strength gains. You're looking for better pumps and maybe the scale moves up a little bit. Remember lean body mass comes on slow. Okay. So if in three weeks the scale starts to trend up a pound, then you're probably in a bulk. If you got stronger, then you're probably in a bulk. And then I'd cut down from there, maybe 500 calories for a week, and then go back to where you were before, and then slowly trend it upwards. But you're going to have to go by feel. What you don't want to do is look for these huge swings on the scale. You're not going to gain you know, crazy amounts of mass on your body in a, a three-week period. It may be like, more like it's trending in, a, in an upward direction, but you might not see too much on the scale. What have you been doing okay. training-wise like through all this? So I've done in the last 24 weeks, I've done anabolic advanced twice through. I started to do three times through and then I bought aesthetic. And so now I'm on phase two of that. Which of the programs that you've done so far uh, has put on the most strength? I don't know. I mean, Honestly, I just go every day. And the fact is I've been in a cut throughout every single MAPS program. Yeah, so for yes, me, gaining so strength isn't mm. what's happening. Now. Is your you strength, know what I mean? That's, that's, that's going to be a big difference. Yeah, right yeah. difference are you, there, are you somewhat stagnant in your big lifts? This whole well, time? yeah, because again, I've been in a cut. Like throughout every single week of any MAPS program, I have been cutting. Doing a bulk and yeah. power lift. Yeah. yeah, let's have you. I would measure your strength. That's actually not a bad idea what Justin just yeah, said. MAPS yeah, MAPS power lift might be a good program for you. It'll get outside. Yeah, you just need to shake it up. Yeah, I, I want to see. Stimulus. I, you want to see strength gains. If you're trying to gain muscle, you want to see strength. I actually, okay, right, here, here, here's wait, the, shouldn't I cut down to something? No, no, first? no, 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 you're fine, bro. You're lean enough that yeah. you, you'll, you'll, so you know how you said, like, it feels like sometimes you're in a main, you are, that, that's part of like, if, when you do a good job of just being in a nice light bulk, the reality is we know that there's going to be some of these days where you actually might be a little bit in a deficit. That's how people actually lean out sometimes in a bulk is they're, they're building muscle and as they build muscle, their metabolism speeds up and that naturally kind of leans them out in that process. So it's not as cut and dry as, oh, I'm at this many calories, therefore I'm always in a bulk versus I, I'm I, I'm not. It's this kind of ebb and flow, especially when you're right where you need to be of this natural, oh, sometimes I'm going to I'm gonna be cutting a little bit of calories without moving my calories, just naturally with my, my metabolism. Other times I'm in a surplus and I'm going to build and gain muscle. So with your how lean you already are, even though you're not at your most shredded, but you're you're lean enough that I don't have to worry about body fat that much. I would I would love to see you run the power lift program primarily in a bulk. So find a calorie somewhere in your calories that you're not losing weight, right? So whatever that number is. Do you know where you're at right now? Calories? Nineteen hundred. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we need to be way higher. Well, now. you were at thirty one hundred for that big bulk, right? Yeah, we don't need to go that high though. No, I would go twenty five. Yeah. I'd go twenty five hundred, do maps power lift. 
and 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 get strong. And this is what we're gonna do, okay? Because you you have my cell, so you can you can text me as we go through this process, okay? So I I want you to follow the twenty five hundred, go through power lift, and I and I I would if I wasn't talking to you, I would say every th third or fourth week we would interrupt it with like a small mini cut. But since you can talk to me every like couple weeks, give me an update on what's going on with the scale weight and your strength. And then based off of that, I will tell you like, okay, let's run a week cut. So for now, stay in the 2,500 calories. We may not even have to necessarily do a actual cut with you because you're lean enough already and we're not going to boost your calories all the way to 3,000. You're doing a new stimulus to Justin's point with power lift and focusing on that. We might just slowly increase your calories yeah. and you what you might see is I get you to 2,500, then we go to 26, then we go to 27, 20, and you get lean while we go through the process. Do you know, are you at 10% right now? I mean, if if they sh sent you the most recent picture, because I actually sent one yesterday. Oh, Doug, you got that? No. no I, I does it, no. Did we, it have the red arrows? We got the one. We have the three. We have the 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 start. No. We have the big bulk, and then we have the initial like cutting. Do, do you know where you're at now? What body fat percentage? You have an idea? I would say fourteen percent, maybe. You look leaner now. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, you're leaner now. Oh, oh this that's is now. Really? Dude, okay, okay, honestly. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to do the uh, the whole bioelectric impedance just to... You look hungover in the last picture. <laughs> good. Well, it's, you know, first thing in the morning, dude. Just to track... Not, uh, not just the, with you. <laughs> just to track the, um, the ups and downs. What do you call it? Where yeah, you're, you're even tracking. though the number's not accurate, the trend. The yes, trend. Yes, 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 Adam, yes. I just sent you what I look like today. Yeah, yeah. That was the comment about looking hungover. You're yeah, like, yeah. You're like, yeah. You're good. You're good. All yeah, right. I, I, anyway, so if you think I'm lean enough to start a bug now, that's great news. I can end this call and go eat another meal because I'm dying for it anyway. We're going to get you. You got to get strong. You got to get strong. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a bulk without strength gain is fat gain. Uh, and strength is one of the best, 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 best. It's not perfect, but it's one of the best metrics of whether or not you have good workout programming. We don't want to do is get caught up in the like, I go to the gym and just do the exercises while I, you know, manipulate my diet type of that. That's yeah, like a pre-contest exactly. bodybuilding approach, which is terrible long term. My my goal for you in powerlift is to is to get strong as fuck and not put any fat on. Yeah. I don't care if the scale goes up a little bit because then maybe we built some muscle, and I don't care if it stays the same per se, so long as we're building strength. So I may just keep increasing yeah. calories all the way through power lift. So start at the 25. Right. We're going to send over the power lift program to you so you have that. And then just keep me updated. Like, say every two weeks, check in with me. Just you know, let me do, know. Let's do a follow-up at the end of power lift. And then we'll, we'll follow up at the very yeah. end. So we'll do a, a public one where everybody can hear your, your story as we go through. But check in with me about every two weeks. Give me an update on calories, how your strength is feeling. And then if you have access to test the body fat, that would be really good for me. Okay, so access as in like go do a DEXA or just yeah, the yeah. trend. So go do a DEXA. Yeah, I would love for you to do that's that. That's fine. Okay, if that's easy for you to do that, then that the more data yeah. I have, the better I, I better it's going to be for me to be able Great. to tell Yeah, yeah. So just no problem. every two weeks, check in with me on the DEXA and then to let me know how strength is going. Let me know where your calories are. And then from there, I'll tell you what to do with the calories. But we may keep just slowly increasing your calories through that whole program if all if all goes well. That sounds great. All right, you got it, dude. Uh, Adam, Adam, would you would you uh, trade Kaminga at this point? <laughs> oh, hell no, would bro. You trade what? Yeah, are you kidding me right now? Uh, are you? I know you're watching him right now. <laughs> you have to trade good for good, bro. You no can't way. Just last be like, oh, last, let's take last six games, averaging over twenty points. The last twenty something games, averaging over ten points. He's now driving to the lane, See, putting his shoulder okay. down. All right, so Sal, here's the deal. These Warrior fans, they want a good player, right? <laughs> but as soon as one of their good young players is good, they're like, well, we can't trade him. <laughs> it's like, how are you going to get someone good if you don't trade someone good? You're all delusional. I'm not letting point. go of him. I'm not letting go of him. Get out of <laughs> here. Right. Get out of here. I'll, I'll give up Clay first. All right, man. All right, okay, so I'll, in, bro. I'll talk to you later, okay? Okay, see you guys. Thank see you. You. Yep. you got it. You have a podcast? Yeah, bro, oh, he's a killer. Yeah. His oh, YouTube, okay. He's a huge YouTube. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. yeah. He's so he used to be oh, a, uh, a, a like a sports announcer oh, like on TV. All right, all right. And then he's and then he did his own thing, and so he's got it. What's it? It's AM Hoops is his YouTube channel. I don't know. I'll look. Oh, up. Andrew's pulling it up yeah. right now. I tell, I tell you though, you, if you're bulking and your strength isn't going up, like you're gaining body fat. That's a, a strength ha has got to be tied to the bulk. Well, you it, see it what like that from this picture. Oh yeah, you see what the, the guy yeah. put him on way too many calories. Yeah, and tried to probably, 
the guy needs to build a base, like a real solid muscular base. And yeah. Like, and so to just focus on that for a while is going to do him way better. Because then it's not like this yo-yoing back of like the calorie game. Uh, my prediction, if we do it right, is he'll be able to run through Maps Powerlift, which was a great suggestion, Justin. And he just is actually increasing the whole time. Yeah. 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 Because you see his lifts go up a lot. He'll yeah. be lean and And, and hopefully he like yeah. slowly leans out while getting stronger. And at the end of it, he'll be he'll be leaner, eating more calories and stronger than he's ever totally. been. And even though he might not be as shredded yeah. as he's been before, that'll be okay. He'll be at such a great base. We'll be at 30. He can manipulate that a yeah, lot easier. We'll be at 3,000 calories. We can cut him down to 2,500 like yeah. we at the beginning. And then he'll get super shredded. So. Our next caller is Marco from New York. Marco, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it? Hey, guys. How are you? What's up? Good. Uh, thanks for having me on. I've been listening to you guys for many, many years. I'm a huge fan because I love that you talk about fitness, but you bring in different topics uh, like science, peptide therapy, and recently stem cell research. So it's cool to get a, a holistic approach to everything. So thank you for that. You got it. I appreciate it. Uh, so in short about me, I'm a New York city firefighter, um, five, nine and about, a, about 180 pounds. I've been training for roughly three years, uh, and I've ran the RGB bundle as well as maps power lift. So, you know, recently I've been just in an effort to scale and, uh, you know, appropriate my training. What I've been doing is, uh, undulating my, uh, periodization. So I've been running like, for example, uh, 10, eight, six, then I'll run a deload and then eight, six, four, I'll run a deload and, uh, progress until I hit a new one rep max. Uh, so just in short, my one RMs are 385 for back squat, uh, about 445, maybe a little bit more on the deadlift, 225 bench and, uh, 155 overhead press. Uh, that being said, I made majority of this progress while progressively cutting. Oh, wow. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. So uh, my biggest question and the concern that I have is I've developed a decent level of strength, but uh, I've never, I, it's, it's been over the course of the years, I haven't developed that, that level of muscularity that I'm searching for. It's like that, den not, I know it's not going to call density, but like that thickness or that solid look. So I'm just trying to get a better idea of how I can continue to approach that. Bro, we need to bulk. It. Yeah, bulk. Exactly. It's time to bulk. Yeah. All right, well, how, what's your body fat percentage? Fuel that strength. Do you know? So I was, I was about 160 pounds, roughly 10, 11% body fat. Uh, and this off season, I did bulk slowly for about six, seven months. Uh, so like I said, I'm about 180 pounds now. Uh, I think I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 to 20%. Oh, okay. Um, you need to cut that. Yeah. Not, yeah. You need to cut that, mm -hmm. not bulk. So when you, when you get lean, that's what gives you that, that hard kind of dense look. By the way, mm -hmm. you said, you put up here that you do 60 body, 60 body weight pull-ups. In a row. No, I could do uh, my body weight plus sixty pounds. Oh, okay. I was like, Holy shit, that's yeah, a lot of pull ups. Yeah. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you got just go back on a cut. I mean, you know, it's it's interesting when you get lean, how much bigger you tend to look and the density and the definition really starts to show up. So I would go back on a cut and kind of aim back down towards that 10, 11 percent and make it a nice, nice, slow, even cut while trying to maintain a lot of the strength gains because you're really strong. You're doing great with your lifts. Yeah, where's your consistent caloric intake right now? Right now, I've been tracking a lot less loose. I mean, a lot more loosely, but it's definitely over three thousand calories. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. When I was cutting, uh, I started at roughly twenty four hundred, and then you know, towards the end, when I was weighing one fifty seven to one sixty, it was about two thousand to eighteen hundred. Uh, I got a little bit more aggressive trying to get into that single digit, but my body was kind of starting to push back. So yeah. I knew it was time yeah. to you know take a break. I would do a cut. Um, I just wouldn't do a really aggressive one. Maybe somewhere around twenty six or twenty seven hundred to start. Yeah, and just see okay. how your body responds to that before you drop any lower. Uh, let's see what happens there. And yeah. then uh, programming. What are we doing right now? Workout. Uh, yeah, right. So I typically I really like low reps, heavy weight. That's just what my body you know always gravitate toward. Uh, gravitate towards rather. Uh, so typically I run anabolic. But what, right now what I'm doing is. Um, it's a uh, bigger, leaner, stronger by Mike Matthews, but uh, I just wanted to try something new. Um, but typically, like I said, I always uh, run anabolic, or I always go back to that or power lift. That's what Matt I like strong. the most. Uh, yeah, I like either Map Strong for you, or if you want to try something different, Old Time Strength, old time. only because of your job. I know you're a, mm -hmm. you're a firefighter, and uh, Old Time Strength is going to give you really crazy re functional strength, really transferable strength. But Map Strong will do the same thing, so I like those. Bigger, leaner, stronger is a great program too. Mac Mike Matthews has he's got decent programming as well. So, but we'll send you Map Strong if you don't have that. And I would do the cut, and once you start okay. to feel like your body's resisting again, I would go on a bulk. 
but I wouldn't go bulk forever. I would bulk until you started to feel good again and then go back on the cut. Yeah. That's how you get down. So for people listening and for you, when you start to cut and you start to get to a body fat percentage where you start to feel that resistance, and typically it's anywhere before a man, if they're healthy, you know, once you get to like 10, 9%, you start to feel this kind of like my body's fighting it. Then what you do is you do a little bulk, get up to like 11%, 12%, build some strength, and then do the cut again. And that's usually enough to get you past through that 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 plateau. Otherwise, you got to keep cutting calories to the point where you're just fighting your body and you start losing muscle. I got you. Thank you very much. And then, you know, in terms of doing that slow cut, is there like a certain percentage, like just to get an idea of like what I should be aiming to lose per week? Is it like a pound roughly or maybe like 1% of my like overall body weight oh, that you guys recommend? Honestly, I don't want to see major weight come off the scale. Initially, there's always going to be a little bit of a like a, a bigger bump because of the water and the carbohydrates, things like that, right? So after the first week, I don't want to see major drops. I mean, like a pound would be plenty. I don't... Because if we do a good job and we're not cutting that hard, you may actually build some strength in the process. Yeah. And so, yeah, don't. Uh, we're looking at when we're in a cut. I'm looking for too drastic of drops, and you don't want to do that. Just keep it to where it's a nice, slow, gradual. If you have access to body fat testing, um, I used to aim for one and a half to two percent body fat loss a month. That's what okay. I would aim for. That's a nice. That was a nice, consistent, not too aggressive body fat percentage loss on a monthly basis, but it was nice and consistent. So I get tested every two weeks or every 30 days. And if it went down every 30 days, one and a half or so percent or 2%, I was happy. If it went over 2%, I would bump my calories. Okay. Understood. All right. And then, uh, just, uh, if you don't mind, do I have a one follow-up question of that course. relates to my, uh, bet. So my squat and my deadlift have always been the the lifts that I've been able to push and get stronger and a lot quicker. Uh, my bench press has been lagging and it's been a lot more difficult to scale it. Uh, so I was just wondering if you guys had any tips uh, to help progress. And I guess 225 is currently my plateau. So to push past that plateau. You've already followed mass power lift, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. We told you to do map strong. So map strong has a very heavy emphasis on uh, overhead type pressing Mm -hmm. And uh, that, in my experience with people who tend to plateau with a bench press, who've done powerlifting routines before, that tends to push them over the limit. So I'd be very interested to see where your bench press is post map strong. So let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. You All got right, it, Marco. man. Thanks. Keep saving lives, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. I, my uh, my bench press went up. I got stuck. I don't remember what number it was, but I got stuck. And then my overhead press is what made it go. I'm glad you asked in. him body fat percentage because I was like, you need to bulk. And then I, I didn't realized that he was already. <laughs> no, he does. He wants. Like, oh, he doesn't look hard because he's at 18. percent No, 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 totally. I just I, I assumed he was lower because I thought he put in there lower weight. Like his, well, and you know, he was getting strong in a cut. And I'm like, wait a minute. Are, like, have you got strong in a bulk? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was no. That initial. density look that people are looking for is a combination of leanness and muscle fullness. Because you could also be lean and not look so dense because your muscles are flat. <clears throat> but if you're like lean, for men typically between nine to eleven percent body fat, and you have nice full muscle bellies, you'll you'll look dense. I'm glad you said that because I'll tell you what, Marco. When you listen to this, the biggest challenge as you go through this process, because you're going to be in a cut and because you want that full look, you're going to be the you're going to have the flat look oh, a lot at of first the time. for sure. So you, you trust the process, right? And that was one of the hardest things for me, uh, you know, cutting for a show was the psychological part yeah. of being it, depleted all the time and training really hard and knowing that I want this big, full, hard look, but you have this what we call in the bodybuilding world this flat look because the muscle bellies aren't filled up. Um, just stay the course, trust the process, trust that we know what we're doing. And I promise at the end of all this, you'll be happy with the way you look. That's right. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free fitness guides. You can find a lot out there to help you with your fitness goals and it's free. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 